Welcome to How to Play Cricket. This is the second part of the tutorial of How to Bowl the Dusra. If you haven't seen it already, I recommend you go back and watch part one because it goes into in-depth detail of how to bowl a Dusra with the Kushel method and there's also a vast explanation on the basics of the Dusra. So the second method I'm going to show you today on how to bowl the Dusra will be the Said Ajman method and this is a different method because the Kushal method was you cock the wrist sideways and you lean over and you flip the ball out over the front knuckle. With this one you don't cock it sideways, you cock it backwards and then you release it from the front and it pops out from the front of the hand. The benefits of this and the reason why I mainly bowled the Dusra with this side Ajma method is because you can control the ball more easily, you can put it on the spot exactly where you want it to and it's easy to bowl more variations. So you can bowl your Dusra and your off spinner with very similar action which is almost unpickable because the differences in your hand movements are so subtle that a batsman will not be able to pick it, especially when you're doing a crossing. Let's go down to grip. Uh, for the Kushal method I did say there was no particular way of holding the ball. For this one there is and it's a looser grip. So this is my grip on how I bowl the off spinner. Thumb on the ball, main fingers, I've got the seam against my finger and from here I will bowl the off spinner. To bowl the dusra you have to have a bit more looser and you can clearly see daylight in between the finger and the cricket ball. Now if it slips then I just add a bit more pressure but you can just see a little bit of daylight between the thing, my finger and the cricket ball. Next thing you do notice is my thumb is upwards because you don't want your thumb to get in the way. Side Ajman also has a thumb upwards and there's an interesting story. The England cricket team couldn't pick Said Ajma, so after the first test match there was a lot of analysis going on and thankfully for Pakistan the commentators gave away his tricks which the England team supposedly already knew because they did the analysis beforehand. Ajma saw the analysis and he made changes to his bowling again. So basically what England found out is whenever Said Ajma had his thumb up in the air this was the dusa. The reason why is when you flip the ball out from the front you don't want your thumb to be here because the ball then has to go over another obstacle which is your thumb and then also the thumb is a hindrance because it's in the wrong position so this is why you have to have your thumb in the air you hold the ball loosely you have your thumb in the air and this is where the ball comes out from from the front of the hand past the thumb so side so will recognize that this is what England are picking so what he did was he kept his thumb he kept his thumb at the back so he kept his thumb down here and this way, when he, they bowled it, he couldn't pick his dusa. He also mixed it up. He put his thumb here and bowled the off spinner as well. So he was changing his uh, thumb positions just to show the batsman this is an uh, off spinner as well as a dusra. Now, there is some exceptions. I have bowled this with the seam. And this is the out of the three types of delivery which I will be teaching you the Kushel, the Ajma, and the Murali methods. This is the one which I recommend you can bowl with the seam. The reason why it is, you can hold it on the seam and when you release the ball from the front of the hand, the ball can come out with a straight seam. So you can manipulate where you're going to drift the ball. This way you can bowl the ball like a dusra, it comes out, the ball is pointing towards first slip and with the rotations the ball out swings. On pitching, it dusras away from the bat even more so you can get appreciable movement and this is what I have bowled a few times but for this to happen you need a very good ball a newish ball this is an old ball so this is one of the reasons in matches I never attempt to bowl with the seam because there's no benefit of the swing now the benefit of the side Ajma method is the bounce it's a very good action where you come as high as possible from a high position and you can come straight down as a result you're giving lots of top spin and the ball will dip and bounce as a result. So here's how you bowl it. Get into a good position like an off spinner. You bring your hand round and from this position you are now turning your wrist upwards. So the palm of your hand is facing the sky. For an off spinner your hand will be down here. You'll be coming around bowling off spin. So your hand when bowling the off spinner, the back of your wrist will be pointing towards the sky. But for the dusra it will be the other way around. Now as soon as you cock your wrist around, you get the automatic flex which I mentioned in the first video and it looks like you're now bending your arm but actually what you're doing is just cocking your wrist and you've got the natural flex. This arm now comes all the way over 
and this is where you get as high as possible. The higher you get, the better. So what I try and recommend is you go in your tiptoes because this actually helps your dusra and also helps your hand positioning. So you get as high as possible. And from this position, only from here do you rotate your wrist. So from here you do a quick rotation and it's not just a quick rotation where you're turning your whole wrist around and bowling it, you are dragging downwards. So you're bringing your arm round, rotate your wrist here and you drag downwards. You're literally pulling down on the ball. This is where trial and error comes into it. You have to practice and bowling the ball uppishly. And from uppishly, I look at towards the batsman's helmet and bowling it towards that angle. And with the correct speed, the ball should dip and land in the perfect area. So it's all about finding the loop that you feel comfortable with. For me, you can get as high as possible. You could rip the ball downwards. The overspin will let the ball dip. So A, I aim for the head. I know my pace, so I know where the ball's gonna land. And from there on in, with that loop, the ball dipping, the ball will bounce extra. And this is why I love this action more than any of the other dual-star bowling. So side over got done for chucking. And the reason why is, when he got to a high position, he extended his arm. When I bowl my dusa, I don't extend my arm, I follow through with the bent arm. So the reason why is, if you remember, if you cock your wrist sideways, you get the natural bend. And when you bring your arm over, it, it strains your shoulder. So you have to bend your arm slightly to reduce the strain. This way you can get your arm closer to your ear. The people at Murali, they had the luxury of being very flexible. They could turn their wrist and come right towards their ear. But us mere mortals who can't bowl without injuring our shoulder, we have to just bend our arm slightly just to relieve the strain. And bending the arm and bowling isn't a sin because if you remember, I mentioned Gareth Batty in the first video, he bends his arm and comes all the way over and bowls his off spinner. So bending the arm isn't a problem, it's extending it. Said Ajman did extend his arm and that's because the back of the hand wasn't fully facing the bass and he's got very, very long fingers like most international off spinners. He bowled it more from the front so the two fingers rotated and it went straight from the front. Like this, my one is more cocked sideways. And I find it easier this way because as I say, I don't have the longest fingers. And from here, I can definitely drag down more. There are days where I bowl it from the front of the hand and not from a cocked wrist. The reason that happens is because I've got full control of my deliveries. So Ajman got done for chucking because he used to throw the ball. The reason why is when he got to this position, He's extended his arm and that put extra pace on the ball. Now the main reason why he put extra pace on the ball is probably the pressures of international cricket where you've got to bowl fast and flat. He bowled very fast and the dosa were very flat as well. Another reason why he got pace on the ball was he had this specific action which no bowler in international cricket has got. I'll show you from side on. He used to get his high arm and then he used to have this whip action where he used to lean backwards and we all know in cricket you don't lean backwards like this especially for spinners and then he used to come straight down. Come straight down and then at the same time that creates elastic energy in your arm and that makes you fold the ball faster. One thing I did do is mimic people's action to see what works for me and leaning back is it's a pretty good example. From here you can judge what you want to do next. You want to stop in your action, judge and then whip your body around, body comes first, then the arm comes around. There is one drawback, because it's a flawed action and coaches don't teach it, because it gets you off balance. Another advantage of bowling the side Ajman way from front of the hand is the revs you give. You're spinning the ball so hard that even if you slow the ball down and you bowl with loop, when it hits the surface there's acceleration and that is fantastic because the ball that fizzes through the air will accelerate off the wicket. Even on slow wickets, it, will, it should gain some sort of pace. And this is how off-spin is to generally bowl. And if you're not getting acceleration off the wicket, you need to give more revs. So while the first one was very flat, it just turned away a bit. I will try and flight it now. 
when you do play cricket, I recommend you practice before the match. And when you come into the match, you don't bother to do start off with, you don't bother any variations. You start off with your basic off spinner. If you have to, try and get three overs out of the way of off spin. Get control of your fingers on the ball. Make sure you're comfortable how you're gripping it. And from there, you can start experimenting. By then, your wrists are warmed up as well, especially if you're from England and the conditions in the morning are usually cold. And now I'm going to go around the wicket to show you that the turn now is going to be much more. This is why Said Ajman always goes around the wicket to bowl his losers. Because from here, you can twist more and get more body into it. So here I'm going to bowl the dosa to a left-hander. And now I'm going to bowl the dosa to a right-hander. As a flat dosa. So as you can see straight away the control is much better. I know what I'm bowling, I can say it now and whatever I bowl will come out. And that's an absolute ripper. That was slightly more flighted. It just shows as soon as you flight it, you get a big bounce and dip uh, and turn, of course. So, so the first time I met Sai Dajma was at Surrey. Oh, he was in the second team with me. Uh, he wasn't an international player then. So uh, we got to know each other just through playing cricket for second team Surrey. Um, first time I met him, he was doing throw downs with me. Everything was going away from the bat. I wasn't taking much notice because usually I think I'm a player who can pick anything that moves. I thought he was bowling leg spin, that's how much it was moving away. Yes, we weren't bowling for full length, we were just doing throw downs to each other. So we were playing a three day game, and I was at mid wicket for two days. Every time I saw him bowl, I thought he was bowling leg spin. It took me till the second day I realised that this guy is bowling off spin like me, and then I realised, wow, um, he's got such a flexy wrist, it's such a fast arm action, I couldn't pick it from square on. And that was the first time I saw Ajmal play. He was taking six wickets every other match in the second team, but because he wasn't a recognised name, because he wasn't playing for Pakistan, he never got picked for the first team, but I believe he should have been county contracted right there and then. So now we come on to the third method, and one of my favourite bowlers, Matai Mohanitran. We're going to bowl with his action. So Murali's talked about in subsequent videos that it took him five years to bowl the Dusa in a match, so that's how long it generally takes. And like Murali, I started bowling off 16 yards and then slowly but surely going back to the full length pitch and hopefully getting the do so right. Hopefully with this in-depth video you'll get a more quicker understanding of what it is because back then Murali was inventing the do so from scratch but now we have all the resources and I am showing you different methods and all these methods which I'll be showing you, you can mix them all up. I sometimes bowl the Ajman method where I lean slightly over and bowl it just for variation's sake but sometimes it comes out easy. Murali cocks his wrist sideways and then he whips the whole wrist round, so he's got this big, big whip round action. And there's a lot of energy involved, and out of the three actions, this is the one which you can bowl with a genuine pivot and follow through. And at the same time, when you're doing it, you whip your wrist round. And that's how it works, and that's how the do so comes out. It's not a case of that you whip the ball on its axis, and get the ball to spin on its axis, no. You cock the wrist, and then when you whip the ball, the ball comes out, in the dosa motion. If you just bowl it like this and you spin it, you're just throwing the ball on its axis and the ball will skid on, so that is a variation. But cocking the wrist and then whipping it around, the ball is released from the front in the motion towards first slip. With this example, you don't need to aim towards first slip and follow the ball. You can bowl effectively from over the wicket and around the wicket. As you can see in the video, Murali, like most off spinners, find them more comfortable bowling do starts from around the wicket because you can put more body in there and with that angle it just moves away slightly it looks very effective ball a do shot first fast do shot yeah <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Absolutely. Safe to say, I had no idea what that was doing. So my grip is more like the Kashan method. It's cross seam. It's a, I'm holding it quite tightly. And like Murali, I try and mimic bows to see what works for me. And when I start off a spell, I try and keep my arms upwards like this, just to get my head in the right mindset of how to bowl the dusa. Once you've got the dusa going and you've got your rhythm, then you can employ your own action. And sometimes I just go back to the side Ajumal way because I try and mix deliveries up. Where Ajumal way is for the top spin res that bounce. This is for drift and spin. The Kushal way is not the easiest ball to bowl, but I do bowl it just for variation's sake where I bowl it to come in. And it's so subtle that you just break the wrist at the last second that the ball becomes an off spinner. Otherwise, if you continue to flip the ball out of the knuckles, it becomes a dusra. So with this method, you can come in from an angle. And I do recommend it because coming in from an angle, you have to then pivot more. And that gives it more body. And you get that sort of effect, that you, like you're coming around the wicket, where you have to pivot more. So now I'm going to show you deliveries of my time a different way. So I've just bowled a few balls and I've actually forgotten how to bowl the Merlin method. I was cocking my wrist backwards and turning my wrist. There's not that much movement if you turn your wrist back and then turn. So this is why you've got to cock your wrist sideways and then that gives more motion and that gives more rip as well. That was a leg stump ball. Now I need to get on off stump. Yeah, that definitely turned. Yeah, it's more like it. You can see there as well the bounce. It hit the seam. It was crossing. That ball kicked. Yes, it's a hard surface, but hopefully you get a general idea that you do get major results of running crossing. The do are there to make the batsmen change their mind when it comes to playing their shots. It makes them think more. And just to have that in your armory will stop them coming out of the wicket. And ultimately, if that gives you more dot balls, that can only benefit the bowler because they eventually have to get runs off you somehow. Whenever I try and get as much height as possible, the Dusa comes out every time. It's only when I'm flat footed do I struggle. Now I'm going to be going around the wicket, you will see it will be much more easier to bowl the Dusa. Look at that. First ball, and it worked. So there we have it, three methods of how to bowl the dosa. Kushel, Ajmal, Murali. My major tip for you is we are not flexible like Murali. So if you can employ a bend in your arm, use it to your advantage because then you can come closer to your ear when you bend your arm. But always turn your wrist and never straighten it. It's very hard to straighten anywhere when you turn your wrist. But from here, you can still whip down. And this is one of the biggest problems with off spin is when they bowl the ball very upright and that's it. You should be whipping downwards. If you do it with a dusa, you'll whip downwards with a bent arm and you come straight down. You're using more momentum, your momentum is going towards the target and that is a real way to bowl off spin and do star bowling. Always work on your stock delivery because that's going to be your ball you're going to be bowling at least 4 out of 6. Guys, hope you liked the video. If you help me make this channel grow, you will see more amazing unique videos like this and what I want you to do right now is subscribe to the channel like the video share this with your club mates and leave a comment below let me know if you don't understand anything more importantly subscribe to the channel because this is in the end of it I'm gonna give you a bonus do star video it is the biggest spinning do star from over the wicket I've got to work if you don't know what the difference is watch out for part 3 and you can only get that if you subscribe to the channel
Yorker is hit into the gap, and that's 50. Incredible stuff, really, is one hell of an effort from him. He loves it, the fans are loving it. The dugout is incredibly happy because they're seeing a sensational 50 here.